So we're gonna create, so we're gonna create a Bitcoin ticker in this video. And I'm gonna use React and we're gonna use the library React query and also a little bit of style components, even if there's not much style to this actually, but I always use the style component, so that's a habit of mine. And we're gonna use a free API to get the data for Bitcoin. So I found this one here, blockchain.info forward slash ticker. And you have a lot of different information here in different currencies about the current Bitcoin price. So that's what we're going to do. And it's going to look like this when it's finished. And you can change the currency here. And you can see that it's changed down here below. But I guess the US dollar will be the one that's used most. And this one currently updates each uh, 30 seconds. So yeah, you can set your own interval. I don't know exactly what this API allows, but I guess we will be fine for fetching new data every 30 seconds. So that's the finished application. So let's begin. I'm going to start from scratch. So make sure that you're inside a folder where you want to have your application and go to your terminal. Uh, I'm going to bump this one up a little bit. Something like this. And I'm going to use create React app and TypeScript in this one. So mpx create dash React dash app. And the application is going to be called maybe React dash BC ticker. Something like that. And we're going to use the TypeScript template. So double dash template and TypeScript. This is how you use uh, uh, create React app with TypeScript and we press enter and wait for it. It will probably take a while before this finishes. All right, we're good to go. So make sure to navigate inside of the project folder, cd react dash bc dash ticker. I constantly forget this one and I start installing dependencies outside the folder and that's no good. So make sure to navigate inside of that folder. And now we're gonna install the dependencies for style components, so npm i styled dash components and as we're using typescript we also need the types for it so we have an at types forward slash styled dash components and then i'm going to use react query to fetch the data so we install react dash query also so i'm going to open up my code editor something like this i guess will be fine. And we have the SRC folder. And I'm going to bump this up. And we can remove some stuff here. We don't need the app.css. We don't need the app.test.tsx. We don't need the index.css. We don't need a logo. We don't need report web vitals and set up tests. So we can delete those ones. Move to trash. And in the app.tsx file, we can clean this up a bit, remove this one here. We actually don't need to import React anymore as we're using React 17. So remove this one. I like to have an arrow function instead, const app equals like this. And we can remove this stuff here, everything inside of the header. We can just type out start. And also in the index.tsx file, we can remove some stuff, remove the report web vitals, remove the CSS, index.css, and remove this stuff here at the bottom. Save it, and also save the app file. I'm gonna start up the application, npm start. I already have another application running here. So actually I'm gonna, Break that one first. That's the finished version. And then I type npm start. And we can see that it says start up here. So we should be good to go. Just open up the console also. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is to set up React query. And we do that in the index file. We have to create a query client for us to use. So we import query client and also the query client provider from react-query, like this. And then we create our client, const client equals new query client. And we call that one. So this will create a client for us to use, and we have to provide it to our application. So down below here, just above the app, 
we use the query client provider. That's the React component, and it takes in a prop that wants the client. So client, and I move app inside of that one. So this will provide us with a client for React Query, so we can use React Query in our application. And this is new from version three. You didn't have to do this before. As I'm using the latest versions of the libraries now, we should do it this way. So we have to create this client and provide it to our application. All right, save the file, just making sure that everything works. It still works, that's fine. We go back to our app.tsx, and this is actually the only component that we're gonna have for this one. So we're gonna import some stuff up here. So import, we're gonna need a use state, and we also need a use effect for this one. Effect from React. And then we import use query from react-query. And I'm also gonna have some styles for this one later, so I mark it with styles, and I'm gonna create a new folder here. Styles. And I create a new file inside of that one, app.styles.ts. And I'm going to import styled from style components. And for now, I'm going to create an empty style component. And I like to have them in a separate file and import them in the component where I use them. So that's why I do it like this. So I have to export a const. I call it wrapper. And I call styled.div. And I just leave it empty for now. But that will make sure that we can import it here. So in, so in the app.tsx file, import wrapper from dot forward slash styles forward slash app.styles. So that's all our imports. Then we're going to have a fetching function for our data. And I created one outside of the app component because we don't need to recreate this on every render so we can have it outside of the component itself. So I create a const get bc data. bc is of course for Bitcoin equals. This is an async function. And then I'm gonna wait and then I await again. So the first await inside of parentheses is for the actual data to be received. And the await outside of, of the parentheses is gonna be for converting to JSON. So I await fetch parentheses. We have the string with the URL, https colon forward slash forward slash blockchain dot info forward slash ticker like this. And here, after the last parenthesis, I have a dot JSON and I call this one. So that's what this await is for. When we convert it to JSON, that's also an async function. So that's why I have two awaits. This will hopefully get the data for us. And as we're in TypeScript now, we have to create some types for the data that we retrieve. So type Bitcoin data equals, and we have the types. The first one, if we look at it here in the browser, you can see that we have all these properties here. 15 minute last buy sell symbol. So we can type this object. So the first one, we have to have quotes for this one as it's also numbers. So 15M. And we say that it's a number. The buy is going to be a number. Last is going to be a number. Cell is going to be a number. And the symbol is going to be a string. So this is the individual data for each currency. And then we create a type for the whole object that we retrieve here. And I'm going to call that currencies because we have two objects. We have one with the property of the currencies. And then we have another object with all the data for each currency. So I create another type, currencies equal. We can create a type like this. We have a square brackets and then the key. And we say that the key is a string. And each of these keys is going to hold an object with our Bitcoin data. Something like this. And this async function is going to return all this data. So we can type the return type for this one. And if we look here, we can see that this one is a promise. It's now set to any, and that's no good. So we can type this better. So we copy this one. And here we have a colon. So this is the return type. 
And we can set that the return type is going to be currencies. And it's also promised, so we have to use this generic here for a promise, otherwise it won't work. So that's our typed fetching function. And then we're also going to have a const outside of the app itself that's called interval underscore time. It's in capital letters because this one is a const that we, we won't change it. And we can set the time, the interval on when we want to refetch the data. And I'm going to set it to 30,000. And that one will equal to 30 seconds. So we're going to use that later. Uh, I think this is all the setup that we need. We can continue on and create our application here now. So inside the app component, the first thing I want to do is to actually fetch some data. So we use the React query library for that. So I create a const, I just structure out the data, is loading, and error, and refetch. I'm also going to remove the sidebar. And I call the use query hook from the React query library. We can also type the return type because this is a generic. So we have these brackets here. And we specify it as the same type as this one here, currencies. Then we have a parenthesis. We're going to name our query key. So we have a string. I name it bc-data. And then we have our function get bc data like this. Do some auto formatting and it will place it on their own row. So if we look here now, we can hover over the data. We can see that this one is going to be of the type currencies or undefined if something goes wrong and it doesn't find any data. And this one is a boolean we can have we can use when we are loading, and this of course is for the error. And then we can refetch the data with this function here. So for now, I just want to console log this out to see if I get some data. So console log data like this. I save it, go back to the browser, to the application. I'm going to reload it. And you can see here that we have the data in the console. So that's great. First, it's going to be undefined. That's when it's fetching the data. And then it's going to be filled with all the data that we get from the API. So that's sweet. We know that it's working. We have the data in the data variable here. So we can also return something when we're loading. So if is loading return, we return a div that says loading and three dots. And also we can return something if we have an error. If error return a div something went horrible wrong. Maybe space there also. Save it, go back, and we can see when we reload here that it says loading. It really, it's really quick, but you can probably see that it flashes there. So we have loading. So we know that that's working also, and that's great. So we're going to move on and create our JSX. So we have the return for our JSX down below here. I'm going to wrap it in parentheses. Yeah, something like this, maybe. Yeah. And instead of this div here, we're going to have the wrapper. That's our style component that we're going to style, but I do that last in this tutorial. So inside the wrapper, I'm going to create a React fragment. Because first, I want to return an h2 tag that says Bitcoin price, like this. And then we're going to have our select box. So I create a select element, select, the value is going to be the currency. And we haven't created this one because we need to have a state for this one as we want this component to be controlled by React. So up here, I'm going to create a new state, const, square brackets. We just structure out this from the array, currency, and set currency. Equal, we call use state, and we set it to US dollar first. So we have a string with USD. All right, so now we have our state, and that's the value that we set here for the select box. We're going to have an on change handle, handler also on this one on change equal handle currency selection. And we're going to create this function also, so we can do that maybe up here. We can remove this console log. 
So I create an arrow function. You can create a regular function if you want that. Handle currency selection equal. We're going to have the event. And for now, I set it to any. We're going to change this in a bit. And when we call this one, we set the currency to e dot current target dot value like this. So now we have our on change function. Close this select and inside of select, we're going to have our options. And the options is going to be from the data. So we have to map through the data and we want the keys from the object to be the options. So we have a curly bracket and then object dot keys. And we have our data and then we're going to map through it. We have a currency and we can return something. And I make an implicit return here because we're only going to return JSX. So that's why I have parentheses and make an implicit return. So then we have our option. We have the key. The key is going to be the currency because that one is going to be unique. Every time when we map through stuff with React, we have to have a key. And you can see that it complains here now because this one can actually be undefined. So I guess we have to check here also if we really have an object. We can maybe do it like this, data. Yeah, we make a short circuit like this. We check if we have the data and then we make a short circuit. And then this one knows that the data isn't undefined so we can map through it because TypeScript warns us now if this one is undefined, we can't really map through it. So that's why we use this short circuit. We first check if we have any data before we do anything. All right. So then we can continue on with our option. The key is going to be the currency and the value is also going to be the currency. For this one, inside of the option, we're also going to display the currency like this. So this should be it for the select box. And then below the select box, we want to display a div with the actual Bitcoin price. And I place that in an H2 tag and I grab from the data currency dot symbol. That's going to be the currency symbol. We have this uh, little complaint here also because it thinks that it can be undefined. So we can do the same thing here, data, data, and data currency dot. We're going to grab the last price. We could also make this check up here somewhere and check if we have the data and put all of this inside of a, a maybe a Turner operator or something. But I think this is a fairly small application, so we will be fine doing it like this. Okay, save the file, go back to the application. And you can see that we have the price here and it's working. So we have this working application, but we have two more things to do. And that is, we want to set an interval so that it updates automatically every 30 seconds. And then we need to give it a little bit of styling. So I go back to my application. Here below this function, I'm going to create a use effect. For this one, we're going to have a dependency array like this and const interval. I set the interval in a const equal set interval. And then we use the refetch function from the React query library. This is a function that we can call when we want to refetch the data. So refetch, and then we have the interval time that we set up here before. So this one corresponds to 30 seconds. You can change it to whatever you want. For now, I'm actually going to change it to maybe two seconds to see that it works. And now this one complains. We see that our linting rules are kicking in. We have a missing dependency, refetch. So we add that one to this array. And we also have to clean up this interval. And in a use effect, we do the cleanup in a return function. So return, and we return our error function and clear the interval. And we have it saved in the interval variable like this. That's why I put it in a const so that we can clear it. 
Okay, save it and go back to our application. Yeah, I have to probably console log something here also because the data won't update that often. So I have a console log refetching data like this. So you can see here now in the console that it refetches the data. So we know that it's working. So I'm going to change this one here to 30 seconds again. So 30,000, and this will refetch the data every 30 seconds. So that's the logic for this little application. And now we can style it also. And I created this style file with the wrapper inside of it. So move inside of this style file. First, I'm going to set the font family. And I'm going to use Arial for this one. I'm going to display it as a flex. I do this to center stuff on the screen. So I align items to center. And I justify the content to center. I also want to set the flex direction to column. And I set the height to 100 viewport height. Otherwise, it won't work with the centering on the screen. And also we have this little div inside with the Bitcoin price itself. So I'm going to style the div inside of this one here. And this is great with style components because you can nest different classes inside of the style component itself. You don't have to create a separate style component for every little piece in your JSX. So for this one, I set the font size to 3RM. I set the background to light blue. I set the padding to 20 pixels and 40 pixels. I set the border radius to 40 pixels and the margin dash top to 40 pixels. This should be it for the styling. So save the file, go back to the application and there you have it. Sweet, and it's working also. You can style this to, yeah, maybe a little bit nicer. But it fills its purpose. We can see this, the Bitcoin price here. And I'm actually quite happy with this. So I'm a big Bitcoin fan. So it was quite fun creating this little ticker. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like my stuff, please, 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 please support me by clicking the subscribe button. And also share some stuff if you like it to other friends or yeah, however you do it. And as always, I hope seeing you in another one.